Uh, thanks for having me. So yeah, I'm gonna be talking a lot about WASI. So I should probably start by saying, well, what is WASI? So WASI stands for WebAssembly System Interface, and briefly, WASI is a virtualizable collection of modular interfaces between WASM and the outside world that are in the process of being standardized. And so WASI forms a natural complement to WebAssembly. WebAssembly abstracts over a variety of physical CPUs and allows us to write portable WASM code and generate portable WASM code that runs across these different physical CPUs. But what about when this portable WASM code wants to talk to the outside world? Well, uh, that's where WASI comes in. But what is the outside world? And there's like a, lot, a variety of perspectives. When we first started, the outside world seemed like uh, the interfaces provided by a traditional operating system, things like file systems, sockets, randomness, and clocks. But as we started to see WASM get used in more places, our kind of view had to broaden. As we started to see WASM go into cloud native places, the set of primitive interfaces looked a little different. It looked a little more like HTTP, config stores, key value stores, blob stores, messaging, and more things. As we started to want WASM to talk to more different kinds of hardware, we started to realize we need uh, new interfaces to talk to GPUs, neural networks, USB, I squared C, crypto, and more things. And there's just more embeddings of WASM coming, and so more interfaces necessary. And hopefully what this illustrates is that we can't expect one host to implement all of these interfaces. Hosts need to be able to implement just the modular subset of that makes sense on that host. So WASI is a collection of modular interfaces. These interfaces are also virtualizable by design because when WASM talks to the outside world, sometimes we want the outside world to be WASM itself. For example, implementing a high level interface like WASI HTTP in terms of a lower level interface like WASI sockets. And we're standardizing these interfaces uh, why? So uh, that we can build an ecosystem of shared tools, which lets us, which lets us amortize the significant effort, uh, efforts in automating the laborious, low-level, error-prone, security-sensitive stuff that otherwise we keep, have to uh, keep reinventing. And this also lets us upstream these interfaces into the popular language tool chains and other popular tools that we want to you know, have these interfaces be built into. Whereas if we were some kind of bespoke project or a company a specific interface and we tried to upstream them, they tell us to go fork ourselves. With standards, we can like show up and actually get this stuff upstreamed. And this gives us time to focus our efforts on building out our platform's unique value instead of duplicatively reinventing the table stakes. And standards also let us bring in deep experience from a, a diverse set of backgrounds, which ultimately leads to a higher quality result. But this, we're not done. This is something we're in the process of because we're practicing incremental co-developments of the specification and the implementation. Because history teaches us that if you do just one of these before starting the other, it's about you get a bad, a bad outcome. And we're doing this via sequence of version releases. And if you've been noticing, WASI has in fact been releasing. So our last major release was in January of 0.2. This is a big release. It contained within it the component model, which defines for us a composable language neutral unit of code. Contains WIT, which is our interface definition language for components. And using WIT, we defined a collection of interfaces that add up to this CLI command world, which gives us sort of a portable POSIX E execution environment. But we also defined an HTTP proxy world. If you look at these worlds like a Venn diagram, they intersect in that they both provide certain interfaces like clocks and randomness. But an HTTP proxy naturally wants to speak HTTP natively to the outside world, whereas the command world wants to speak in terms of file systems and sockets. So this was in 0.2, you know, big release. So we celebrated and then took a break and uh, then got back to work. And then August released 0.2.1. And the big feature here was actually the release process itself and all the tooling and runtime support that's necessary to allow smooth minor releases as well as we added a few features to WITS, the unstable and since gates, to help us control that rollout of new features. And then two months later, in August, we released 0.2.2, which added some OCI integration, which is really exciting stuff I'm gonna be returning to later, as well as this third deprecated gate. And in December, we plan to release 0.2.3, and hopefully this will include the WASI key value proposal, which has had a bunch of work put into it thus far. And so hopefully the pattern you're noticing here is we have a plan to release every two months with sort of a train model. And so it's, uh, you know, when features are ready, they go in that release, and if not, they uh, can just wait to catch the next train. And so while it's not clear exactly what order things will happen, there's a lot of excitement and work on WASI config, blob, messaging, crypto, and web GPU. And using all these new interfaces, we can define a new bigger cloud world, which extending that previous Venn diagram would be a superset of the proxy world. So this is a lot of exciting stuff, but concurrently uh, with all this stuff is a 0.3 release, which uh, is you know, slated for release sometime in the first half of next year. 
And the big feature here in Zwazi 03 is native async support. Now don't panic, this is not a big change like 01 to 02 was, that was big. This is not a breaking change. We're talking about an incremental addition of types and ABI options to the existing 02 component model binary format, such that all WASI 2 components are still valid components in the WASI P3 world. And we'll support both the WASI P2 and WASI P3 interfaces side by side during the rollouts, but then eventually, leveraging this virtualizability of WASI interfaces, we'll be able to virtualize WASI P2 interfaces in terms of WASI P3, so we can actually remove WASI P2 from the hosts, reducing our trusted computing base while keeping all the existing WASI P2 code working, which is like the whole point of this virtualization. And our goals with this native async support are to automatically integrate with source language concurrency features, simplify concurrent interfaces, and make concurrent components composable. So let me dig into all three of these goals, starting with language integration. So already, in WASI 02, I can declare a function load that, say, loads a model from a name string. And I can implement this with a variety of synchronous functions in a variety of languages now. But starting in 03, I can start implementing this with async functions. So for example, in C Sharp, I'd be able to implement load as an async task returning function a return that uh, can, because it's an async function, it can await a blocking operation before returning its new model. And then I can import this load function from, let's say, Python, which can import load as a coroutine, which means in Python I can use async IO to spawn multiple concurrent load tasks before gathering them. And so now I'm doing a cross-language concurrent call uh, fairly naturally that, you know, when the first load blocks, the second one gets to make progress. And so I can do this for all the existing function signatures I could express in 02. But I can also express more function signatures using the new future and stream types. So I could write a transform function from a stream of bytes to a stream of bytes. And I could implement this in, let's say, JavaScript with an async function that takes a readable stream. And because it's just a built-in readable stream, like built into the JavaScript standard library, I can use methods like pipe through and decompression stream. And then I could import this from, let's say, Go. And Go uh, would allow me to have a uh, transform function that takes a read-only channel, and then returns a read-only channel that can iterate over using my Go built-in syntax. And here I'm showing a bunch of async functions, but of course we want to be able to write and implement these uh, interface, consume and implement these interfaces in both synchronous and synchronous codes. So for example, my C Sharp could be written just as a plain synchronous function like it would be today, and the calling async Python still works, so just that loads don't run concurrently, they run in sequence. Or flipping it around, the C sharp could be async, but the calling Python could be synchronous, and then again, I just get two sequential loads. Or I could implement that transform function using traditional WASI libc uh, synchronous read and write calls that have been integrated with the underlying streams. And I can call this from Go, and it'll stream in chunks just like I'd expect it to. And thus, we're avoiding the what color is your function problem made famous by the blog post of the same name by using the isolation of components to separate the async code from the synchronous code and let them interoperate. Also in WASI 03, we want to simplify concurrent interfaces. So just as a concrete example in WASI uh, 02, HP needs 13 resource types and two handler interfaces. And I don't have time to go into the full details of why, but basically there's two stream types that have a direction on them. There's an input stream and output stream. And this kind of infects all the types that want to use them, so we have to have incoming and outgoing requests and responses bubbling all the way up to the handler interfaces. One takes an incoming request and one takes an outgoing request. And then we need some uh, resources that emulate futures. But in WASI 03, I can have just four resource types, which are kind of the obvious ones from the HTTP domain, you know, fields, requests, response, and body, and one handler function, which takes a request and returns a response, like you might hope. And the magic sauce, if you zoom in, is in the, uh, the resource body, whose constructor takes a stream and whose consume method returns a stream. And so there can just be one resource body and everything else. And lastly, in WASI 03, we want to have our components be more, our concurrent components be more composable. And there's two types of interesting compositionality here. There's the first one, which is like, say is a more first order style, Unix pipeline style composition where values flow in one direction. And so for example, let's say I have an interface tools that has three functions, load, which returns a stream, unzip, which transforms a stream, and jq, which consumes a stream. So in JavaScript, let's say I could import these three functions, and they're just three JavaScript functions, and the return type of load, it turns into a readable stream, and that's the parameter type of unzip, so I could just chain them together in one line of JavaScript using plain old function composition, and that just works. And so in that one line of JavaScript, I've been able to wire together three async function calls so that the results flow into each other, and the stream flows in one direction. 
So this is a first order style of composition. We can also express a slightly more complicated, but far more expressive higher order form of composition, which I'll call service chaining style composition. So in this, let's say we've got a world called chainable handler, which describes the shape of a component that imports and exports an HP handler. Noting that this is the same handler interface, so the export of one chainable handler can be the import of the other one, allowing me to chain them. And then let's say I have three components that target this world, allowing me to factor out caching logic from AV testing logic for compression logic, ultimately like practicing this Unix philosophy of have each component do one thing and do it well. And now let's say I want to chain these components. And there are a variety of ways to do this. I can do it in the host in a variety of ways. But we've been working on a language dedicated solely to composition of components called WAC, standing for WebAssembly Composition. And in WAC, I can say I'd like to make a compound handler built by composing these three. Start with an HP cache, use that as the import of an AB tester, and use that as the import of a compressor, and then use the compressor's HP handler as the entry point of this whole composition. And so now, in you know, those four lines, I've been able to express an async call stack, where a requests flow in in a streaming fashion from the compressor into the AB tester and the AB ca uh, HB cache, and then streams flow out with the response body from the HP cache to the AB tester, the compressor. So a far more expressive form of composition, um, and we can express both this you know, first order and higher order composition using WASI 03. And the good news is there's been a lot of progress towards this since I last talked about it. On the design and specification sides, uh, if you want to see a more technical walkthrough of how this works, I gave a presentation at WASMIO called A Stream of Consciousness on the Future of Async in the Component Model, and it's still like mostly technically accurate. And now though, in recently in the Component Model repo, you can see the full gory details, all the bits and bytes of behaviors uh, by going to the readme and clicking Async Support. On the implementation side, uh, Joel Dice at Fermion, sitting here, has been heroically leading the charge. And first, Joel started by doing two successive prototypes to validate the basic design ideas, which were super valuable, ISIS WASFA and component async demo. And then based on those going really well, Joel's now working on a full proper preview three implementation, which you can follow on this Bytecode Alliance project tracker board. And I strongly encourage everyone to go see Joel's talk tomorrow, composable concurrency for WebAssembly components. And then once that initial support lands in WASM time and WASM tools, there's a bunch of work we can do in parallel. First thing is to extend our browser polyfill, which allows these components to run in browser and node today. And the cool thing is we get to use a brand new feature coming to browsers real soon called JavaScript Promise Integration, which lets us do stack switching without the heavy hammer of Asyncify. And for more on this, check out Calvin and Mendy's talk tomorrow called, called Do More in the Browser with WASM Components. And then we can do work on all these different producer tool chains that already have Preview 2 work going on to integrate them with this 03 stuff, and each of these languages have their own different form of concurrent integration in their language, and so we can actually test this out, this hypothesis that we can integrate this multiple languages and have them compose with, the, with you know, Rust, JavaScript, C Sharp, Python, and Go. And so that should give us a pretty strong degree of confidence that you know, we have a pretty good design. But importantly, you don't have to wait for WASI 03. A bunch of folks are already using WASI 02 in practice. And for example, at you know, WASMCon today, I encourage everyone to check out talks by the folks at American Express and Adobe on how they're using WASI 02 and components. Producer tool chains have started to integrate WASI P2. C Sharp has WASI P2 in upstream, and there's a componentize.net tool. And for more on this, check out James's talk, Exploring C Sharp WASM Components. Go has WASI P2 and upstream tiny Go. And for more on this, check out Randy and Joe's talk, WASI to Go, write once, run anywhere. Rust has WASI P2 and upstream. And in the Carb component tool, JS has WASI P2 and componentized JS, which is based on the new Bytecode Alliance Starling Monkey JS runtime project. And Python has WASI P2 and componentized Py, which is based on CPython. Runtimes have also started integrating WASI P2. Of course, WASM time has WASI P2, and WASM time is embedded in a number of other high-level projects, such as Nginx Unix, Nginx Unit, SpinCube, WASM Cloud, Hyperlights, and a number of others. WASM Edge is on track for WASI HTTP in Q1 and actively componentizing WASI and N. And Jayco Transpile is, again, this browser uh, polyfill that lets you run components in terms of uh, uh, WASM 1.0 standards that have been shipping in browsers and Node for quite a while. There's also a bunch of exciting work that's been going on defining a WASM OCI artifact layout. That defines a canonical representation of a component or module as an OCI artifact. 
with the goal of taking advantage of the massive existing OCI tooling and cloud infrastructure that already exists. This has been developed by the CNCF TAG Runtime and WebAssembly Working Group in active with active collaboration and partic participation by the Bytecode Alliance. In particular, there's this WASM Package Tools project, which implements the Wackage CLI. And Wackage lets you publish and fetch components and WIT packages directly to OCI registries. And we're actually using Wackage as part of how we develop WASI, WASI itself, we're in that we're able to publish versions of WIT packages, such as, say, WASI HTTP 0.2.2, to GHCR. And this lets producer tool chains to pull in these new interfaces dynamically and bind gen them dynamically instead of having to, without having to update the whole tool chain to pull in these new interfaces, which is like really cool. And for more on this, see Taylor and James's talk, uh, Container Self, WASM in the OCI spec. So that's what's all coming before 03. What about what's after 03? And this is a lot fuzzier, so take it all with a little grain of salt. Um, but I think you know, the important thing is to address the major remaining open use cases. There's a cluster of use cases around dynamic nested components and resources, scoped callbacks, optional imports, and caller supply buffers. It's also been a set of new core WASM features that have been added, you know, since the component model started that we should adopt incorporating the ABI for optimal integration. WASM GC is already shipping in browsers, so yeah, definitely that one. Memory 64 just made it to stage four, I believe, which means it should very soon be shipping in browsers. Stack switching is receiving a lot of active work on by the browsers, and so you know this one is the next logical step. And then shared every threads is really cool. Um, it's not going super fast right now, but whenever it's ready, we should definitely integrate it with that too. But ultimately, lots more prioritization and scoping discussions are to be had. So you know, participate in those discussions, and uh, yeah. So in conclusion, WASI 02 is here, useful and being used. WASI 03 is coming and will bring automatic integration with source language concurrency features, composable concurrency, uh, and simpler concurrent interfaces. If you, this is exciting, you want to get involved, check out the WASI 03 project board, chat with folks in the Bytecode Alliance Zulip chats, join any of the Bytecode Alliance meetings, you don't have to be an official member to join those meetings, and if you want to talk about the design or spec, you know, engage in the component model, uh, WebAssembly component model repo. And lastly, come say hi to my colleague Leslie and I at the Fastly booth and talk about building the future of these WASM tooling together.